Good day! The following lesson is linked to learning outcome, which is language, reading, and viewing. It addresses the following objectives. First, use structurally sound sentences in a meaningful and functional manner. Second, recognize how word choice, imagery, and sound devices affect mood, meaning, and theme. Third, explain and analyze sound devices used. In this lesson, we will look at how the sound of words enhances language. Please look at these pictures. reading or imitating it, what do you think these words have in common? They all have an interesting sound. In today's lesson, we will discuss figures of speech that deals with sounds, the sound devices. But what is a sound device? Sound devices are literary techniques that entail the way words sound in a poem. These are the devices that appeal to the sense of hearing it is a concentrated blend of sound and imagery to create an emotional response. Our first sound device for today is rhyme. Rhyme is the repetition of words with the same sound in a poem. Take a look at this example. Canary birds feed on sugar and seed. Parrots have crackers to crunch. And as for the poodles, they tell me the noodles. Have chicken and cream for the lunch. From the Plaint of the Camel by Lewis Carroll. The underlined rhyme word from the first line, feed and seed, and third line, poodles and noodles, are example of internal rhyme. Internal rhyme when the rhyming words are within the lines of a verse, while crunch and lunch from the second and the fourth line is an example of end rhyme, the most common rhyme used in a poem. End rhyme because rhyming words are found at the end of a line in a verse. When used cleverly, rhymes are enjoyable and enrich the musicality of the poem. The second sound device is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant sounds in consecutive words. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. And that's what alliteration is. Again, alliteration is the repetition of initial consonant sounds found at the beginning of every words in a verse or in a line of a poem. Another example. I have stood still and stopped the sound of feet. An excerpt from Robert Frost's Acquainted with the Night. As you observed, the sound is repeated. That is a concrete example of alliteration. The third sound device is assonance. Assonance refers to the repetition of vowel sounds within a line in a poetry, which is easy to discern. If alliteration is about consonants, assonance, on the other hand, emphasizes the vowel sounds A, E, I, O, and U. Example. A great break, six thick prickly stems. The A sounds from the words great and break and the E sounds from the words six thick prickly are the repeated words which are the assonants. The vowel sounds are repeated, whether at the beginning of words, in the middle, or at the end. Again, that is assonance. So far, we have covered three sound devices. First, rhyme. Second, alliteration. Third, assonance. And finally, we are now on the last sound device for today's lesson. And that is anomatopoeia. Anomatopoeia is a sound device that uses words that imitate real-life sounds. Let's look at the example of onomatopoeia in a poem. A quarter in and pull the knob. Clackety crash, clackety crash. Pull the lever, hope it doesn't stick. Clackety, clackety, clackety click. Those lines are taken from the poem entitled Coin Machine. 
Clickety crush is when the coins falls into the machine. And clickety, clickety, clickety is the continuous falling of coins in the machine. Another example. This is the continuous ticking of the clock, which also says that some forms of onomatopoeia are obvious and universally understood, such as moo, moo. For your task, take a look at this. <laughs> 